Hello. Welcome to our second live chat of 2022. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> I've forgotten how to do this. It's been so long. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, rediscovering joy and like writing and creativity. Um, I think that's something that a lot of us have either lost it or lost it and found it um, <laughs> in the last couple of years. It's been a rough couple of years for a lot of people. So um, we're going to start um, with kind of like a positive side of this, um, which is um, I wanted to ask everybody what what part of the writing process brings you the most joy? And we'll start with Kyra. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is maybe kind of a vague answer, but any any point where it's like I can see like the vision like in my head is actually forming and that can happen at the drafting stage. It can happen at the revision stage, um, but just any point where it's like it starts to feel like it's all coming together um, or like also for me, like the part where I feel like I get to know my characters and it's like, oh, yeah, I know who you are now is always a really exciting point for me to be at. Nice. What about you, Megan? Um, I love revisions. Um, specifically, uh, when I do revisions, I always do a read through of the book. And then I either previously or at that point, I write out note cards with a little description of every scene. And when I'm going through uh, figuring out what needs to get changed on a scene by scene basis, I start putting post-it notes on those scenes and like sticking the new ones in. And I think it's that same satisfying feeling for me. Like you were mentioning Kyra, just the like, Oh, now this is the right shape. Like, even if I haven't implemented yet, like it's the most fun being like, look, I've made it the right framework now. And all I have to do is just implement this thing that I've already come up with and like make the words pretty. <laughs> what about you guys? Um, my favorite part is probably the brainstorming uh, part, like the very beginning when you get that like seed of an idea and you're like, oh, I could do this or I could do this or I could do this. Um, I always think that's really fun. Just kind of like discovering like this world that you're creating uh, is really, really fun for me. Yeah, I was going to say kind of the same thing, like kind of coming up with the the initial idea is always really exciting and really fun. Um, and like thinking of, yeah, all those possibilities of where you can take it. And then when you like reach that point of brainstorming where stuff starts to click together. So kind of like similar to what Megan and Kyra were saying, like these are all different parts of the process where things click together. And that's always such a good feeling um, when you're like, oh, I figured out that like this character would fit in perfectly to this world and this conflict and like figuring out all those connections is always so exciting. And then you actually have to write it. I feel like for me, there's always this this you know there's kind of this high and then you actually start writing it there's this high where you're like brainstorming it's like anything is possible and then you start writing you're like nothing is possible <laughs> but i have to do it <laughs> and then and then and then you work your way back up and to at least something is possible i don't know if you ever yeah. quite, quite hit the if anything is possible high. So i was going to say something very similar to all of this of that it all fits together yay moment so instead i'll go with like when you get in that writing like flow state and it continues to feel possible while you're actually writing, that feels really good. <laughs> that is so rare for me. <laughs> A writing flow state. Same, Emma, you're not alone. <laughs> um, say hey in the discussion section if you're here. I see we've got like 16 people watching, which is pretty good. Um, feels like it's a topic that resonates pretty broadly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. Joe, who said, Joe Catherine, he said, I'm trying to learn to love planning. And LR Red said, brainstorming is my favorite part as well. Making it come together in the draft is the bane of my existence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when the thing you're writing is not the thing you were like imagining when you brainstormed. Always, <laughs> even though you know you can like get it there later. It's still like when you're drafting, you're like, oh, this isn't it. <laughs> like that meme that's like, a llama, he's supposed to be dead. <laughs> yes. That's what it constantly feels like. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so question for you guys, but also anyone who's watching, we'd love to hear from you at every stage of this as well, because it is such a broad topic. And I think we're all kind of just leaning on each other to figure it out. But has the writing process 
or how your feelings around it changed at all in the last couple of years? That can be pandemic years or more broadly since you were a starting out writer full of big hopes and ideas. Um, I can go first, I guess. Uh, yes, yes, a lot. <laughs> um, I think I, the last two years were hard, but for me, like the worst, worst of it was um, right after my first agent and I parted ways and I was kind of left like, well, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I, I was not the dream I was sold. Yeah, I was not expect. even though like this happens to so many people, like it is so, so common. But I was like, um, no, 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 that was not in the roadmap. <laughs> and so I had this like first draft that I was expecting to have someone like guaranteed working with me on it, who is a professional in the industry. And I just like looked at what I had and where I was. And I was like, mm, no. <laughs> And uh, it has been a very long time since that, that I've had an idea that I was really excited about. And it wasn't until about a year ago that I had a book idea that I was like, yeah, this is a really exciting idea to me. And I wrote multiple books in that time period, but all of them, I was like, well, I'm just going to, you know, push through. Um, but it, it took several years to figure out like redefining what a roadmap to success looks like and how do you determine like feeling what like what you're writing is worthwhile I guess when you like have that self-esteem hit I guess if that makes any sense can we talk like I mean maybe like we can let everyone else answer this question but I want to talk about this like thing Megan just talked about with like the push through mentality because like I feel like I very much was brought up in my writing journey on that mentality and I'm kind of like finding some limit I have a lot of thoughts about that <laughs> yes <laughs> but I, I don't want to like interrupt the question we're currently on um it's easy enough to come back because I feel like I have some thoughts on that as well so if you want to go for it go okay for it. <laughs> well I, I guess since I'm talking I will say that <laughs> I've also had a rough couple years for writing um I have been no, like in a constant query trench since like August of 2020, um, which is a long time to be simultaneously like constantly querying. Um, and it's just like not been a fun process um, that I, I think has, again, kind of maybe distorted like the roadmap to success that was in my head. Um, and it's like in an ideal world, you can kind of separate like the the art from the business, but in the real world, it's very, very difficult to do that. And it's very mm -hmm. difficult to, you know, be seeing a book that you like poured a lot of energy into like just getting rejected constantly and still have enthusiasm to say, but maybe this next book will be different. And to be like as excited about that as you're like, you know, um, receiving rejections currently on something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I do feel very hopeful about writing. So I don't want anyone watching to think like, oh, she's going to be so pessimistic for this whole chat because I do feel really optimistic about like my writing projects right now, even if I don't feel like super hopeful, everything's going to turn around in publishing, you know? Um, but it was like you have in your head, I think, this idea of success and how it's going to pan out. And like, sorry, I'm trying to, sort through all the thoughts but you think like oh you're gonna reach this next step and then it doesn't go as you think it's going to and then you feel like you can't talk about it online and so like it's been years now since that and only recently did I feel comfortable even going on the internet and being like hey has anyone else ever been dropped by a form letter when you were like signed with someone because that's not fun and like having to ask for calls and things like that I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. Just this idea of like, oh, I thought that the industry was not going to be as rough once you got your foot in the door. And then like being like, and now I'm supposed to ignore that and write a book <laughs> after all. And of try that. again. <laughs> and try again. And like asking yourself like, well, my agent said she'd recommend me to some people. Do I want to be recommended to those people? Like, what is the next step here? You know, and I, I think just in terms of tone, like I think there is like a lot of like angst in the room. <laughs> but but I like I don't think this chat will necessarily just be like a, a total downer. I think it's going to be this fine balance of like I don't 
I'm at a place where I don't want to approach this from like a toxic positivity standpoint and just being like, just keep writing. Everything will be great. Cause like, maybe everything's not great all the time, but like, how do you, I guess that's maybe the point of the chat is like, how do you kind of acknowledge like all of the things that are not great, maybe about publishing or writing or whatever is going on with the process that, you know, you still find like that core thing that like made you love to write in the first place or whatever. So I'm really resonating with Joe Catherine's comments. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Cause I've also, it's been a crappy two years. I've, <laughs> I want to say I've barely written in the last two years. I did a lot during Nano. Like I've had little bursts and it has been like pushed through and feeling like, Oh, I should be writing again. But for the most part, I've let myself just like pause and I don't, I don't feel like pushing through on a book. I'm not excited about. Like I, I struggle to finish a book I am excited about. I don't want to have that battle with myself. So um, Joe Catherine said, the pandemic has had a huge, huge effect on my writing. I started writing to make myself happy and for self-care. I don't hold anything back anymore. Is it weird? Stop it. Make me happy. Throw it in. Yes. And I'd love to get to more of that. Like I want to find something that it doesn't matter to me what happens to it after. I'm just going to love telling that story. So finding something that resonates like that it might be trickier, but maybe just I can just dream up a book that it's just exactly what I want it to be. Sellability be sellability be damned or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think that's a really nice way of looking at it of just have fun with it. It's hard to like feel like you're putting all this time into something that won't be productive, but I think it has to be okay. Yeah, that was a huge part of my 2021 was actually just taking a very large step back from social media, um, which is where a lot of like publishing news lives <laughs> is on social media and not, not forcing myself to be like constantly grinding, be like, oh, well, I need to be super polished in the live chats, be like, yes you know, it was genre differences, blah, 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 like all of these different publishing things that you're supposed to say and just like letting yourself be a person and letting yourself take your time because there is no rush. And if you step back from social media a little bit, a lot of that rushed feeling goes away. <laughs> it really, really does. I really like what LR Red said. Um, I've had to tell myself it's okay not to write because it went from being a passion to being a chore. Now I feel content with even just jotting down notes for an idea. Um, I think that was something that's kind of in the last couple of years been big for me is just like no longer feeling like making it less high stakes for me. Like I'm not depending on this for an income. Like and I think it is very different, like if you're trying to like be a full-time writer or something. Um, but being like, it's okay if like I go a couple months without writing anything and then like do things in bursts. I think especially kind of back when we started this channel, even just like a few years ago. Um, and I think a lot of this was because of social media that there was very much like a vision of like what your writing should be like. Like you should be writing every day or close to it um, and like hitting these word counts and, and writing a book, every, like, you know, two books a year or something, you know, or a book a year. Um, and just like, freeing myself of that and being like it's okay if I like write in like bursts for like a month at a time and then take time off and come back to things um or if I you know move from one book to another because it's just more what I'm in the mood to write like I'm not under contract <laughs> I don't have an agent I can do what I want mm -hmm. and that is like the amazing thing so I'm dominating a lot of conversation right now I have a lot of feelings about <laughs> this um but that is something that's so amazing about not I wish Erin was here because she could have a different perspective um, being someone who like is a professional writer. But for us, it's like, it's, it's not our job. And that is something that is a plus to not being farther along the writing path. The publishing path is that like, it's, you can do whatever you want. Being able to explore different things. <laughs> like I just like made a huge genre switch last year and wrote something completely different from usual. And I could do that because like no one's depending on me to write the next big fantasy book or anything. Um, I am. And, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll get there eventually. I'm depending on all of the genres from you though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See what I can do. Um, ATW's comment 
prompted an, a question for me. When I get to the push through part of a book, I reward myself by writing fan fiction after so many words per day. So I'm curious mm. for anyone who writes fan fiction or anyone who like treats this like that of like, what about fan fiction writing that is bringing you joy? And is there any way to funnel that into your own writing projects? Or like, what is it about fan fiction that brings people so much joy? I, I never got it, but I love that that's something that so many people get so much joy from. And I feel like I've like seen, I've noticed an increase in like published authors, traditionally published authors on Twitter, like publicly acknowledging, like I still write fan fiction. Um, and, like in the last like year or two, like I feel like things have been so hard that like, people are like, I'm gonna go back to the simple joy. And I think it's like playing in a in a fandom that is already established. For me, that's what always made writing fan fiction easier than writing original fiction was like not having to worry about the world building and the character building. Like it was already there for me and I could just focus on like one thing, <laughs> just doing the plot. And like, and it didn't even really have to have much of a plot if I didn't want it to. I could just like explore the fun things. It's very much a like do all the fun tropes you like and ignore everything else. I've seen know. something interesting, uh, similar to this in the self-publishing world a couple of years ago where someone was talking about how they do not kill their darlings in terms of the scenes that don't add anything that are just like their characters having fun or whatnot and their readers love it and seeing as a bunch of people read fan fiction I can see why that would make sense in like long-running series because it tends to be more of a self-publishing thing where people really know the characters and just getting to see them kind of look it's Christmas dinner and that kind of thing that author was leaving it in their books and not getting any sort of negative pushback for it I'm assuming they found some sort of nice balance, but they let themselves write the parts they loved and they let their readers read it and it paid off. So yeah. I've seen books praised on Twitter recently that was like, oh, it felt like I was reading fanfic, but it was an original world. Like there is just that happy feeling of this indulgence that comes from fan fiction. I got out of my reading slump by reading fan fiction, and I started writing fan fiction again like six months ago. Um, but it's super smutty, so I don't tell anybody about it. Um, <laughs> so, I would like to know about. Yeah, him. I would also like to know. I read Emma's book, and I only put in like six immature Great British Bake Off memes. <laughs> um, but I definitely agree with like what Emma was saying. Like, it's so much easier to like basically like play in a world that's already established like I read a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction even though I haven't read Harry Potter in like like five years more than that um and the same with like reading like it might take me like forever to read like a book but like I can read a fan fiction that's 400,000 words in like a day so I think it's just and like it does have like those scenes that don't add anything to the plot a lot of times and it's just entertaining you know you don't feel like you have to finish like this journey of a story you can just enjoy the characters and like what they're doing um and i think that definitely funnels into like writing too because like when you're writing fan fiction you're those characters if you're staying close to canon at least already have established relationships the world is established you don't have to describe what a setting looks like if it's you know been used in canon or what characters look like if you're sticking with how they look and act in canon um so i think it's just it's more fun it doesn't feel like work even though like writing original works don't always feel like work either but with fan fiction i feel like it never feels like work it's just something that's like purely fun mm -hmm. i think it's also low stakes like like atw 2006 said you don't have to worry about it being good you don't have to worry about selling it you don't have to worry about like doing extensive revisions you know like you just put it up there and if someone leaves a mean comment oh well it's just fan well, fiction <laughs> i'm, I'm really who, an outsider to I'm really an outsider to fan fiction, but this conversation is kind of reminding me of um, there's a Twitter event called Pit Light um, that is kind of like a Twitter, like it, it kind of takes inspiration from Twitter pitch contests where, you know, you people will tweet sh sort of the, the short version of their book and try and get some interest from agents and editors. But someone has started this um, Pit Light event where people just like kind of gush about their books and it's very like loose, like, you know, just talk about the tropes post your aesthetics like there are no real rules to this event and it was kind of interesting after this event that i thought was really really great because it was just people like being excited about the things they were writing after this event um an agent actually tweeted that 
they weren't like requesting anything because that's not that kind of event, but they just said it was interesting to me how to see how fun these pitches were in a way that like the really formulaic ones that you see from, you know, the, the pitch ev events that agents request from, not that those are bad, but it was just like a very different experience, like seeing like authors just like talk about what they were excited about their books. Um without kind of those constraints of like trying to make it marketable or good or, you know, whatever, like kind of like ATW was saying with the fanfic. Um, it makes me think too about for a, for a minute there, fanfic was kind of like, oh, the lesser thing. But in like TV, like spec scripts for TV was a thing for a really long time and like is occasionally still done where people will write fan fiction in this world and get jobs from it. And so it is just, like, it's such good practice, especially since you can reuse character archetypes. Like It's always teaching you to be better and to just have more fun. Um, bit of a topic change. And this is kind of going to lead into a question for Emma. I think I know the answer, but um, thinking about TV shows and how one of the things we so often recommend for like refilling your inkwell is just like watching a lot of television that you love and reading books in genres that you love and stuff like that, of how that like just letting yourself enjoy that so often leads to more ideas. So Emma, is that kind of where your jump to a new genre came from? Because you were reading a lot in that area. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, because I think I also was getting a little bit burnt out on reading too for a little bit. Um, because my previous job I was working with children's and young adult lit. Um, and so like it was partially my job to like be really familiar with young adult books and I had time at work to read too, which was really lucky. But I was just like reading so much, um, specifically like YA fantasy that I started to get really burnt out. Um, cause you definitely reach a point if you're reading like one genre a lot where you're like, everything is the same. <laughs> um, and so like, I, when I switched jobs, um, and it was no longer like a part of my responsibility to read anything in particular, um, I started like branching out just because I could and be like, Oh, here's some stuff that I've heard people talking about that I've wanted to read. And I started reading a lot of romance. Um, and also just because like romance, like it's kind of like fan fiction and it's like really easy to read fast. Um, you uh joe catherine mentioned like with fanfic like readers know what they're getting most of the time <laughs> romance is like that um and so i read a ton of it and that like got me like really stoked about reading again and so then i think yeah it was very natural that the next book idea i had <laughs> was a romance um and it was writing it was a very similar experience to like switching to reading it um that it was like it was fun to write something new um and explore like a new genre um, so yeah, I think that had like a huge part of it was just like reading something new led to me writing something new. That's really cool. I started reading romance more. It was actually after mm -hmm. I had finished reading the Brown Sisters trilogy. I was like, I need like a million more of these. And so I like started reading romance more. And I was always, I was never like a contemporary romance fan. Like that's never, I've always been like fantasy, like it's better with dragons. And it's only been in like the last like few months that I've actually been like, no, like romance is actually really good. Like I like yeah. cute stories, like, mm -hmm. and- Yeah, it's I, really good and it's just so soothing. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very, it's good for the soul, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, and I also like when I read a romance, I know that I'm gonna be happy at the end of it. Like, I know mm -hmm. that the characters are gonna be happy at the end, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice. And, you know, definitely a change from some books that like to shock you with like shocking plot twist endings. I feel like Megan too has like started reading a lot of adult horror in the last couple of years and like now is writing an adult yeah, horror. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I got really, really burnt out on YA fantasy. Not like I don't want it to sound like, oh, I don't like a YA fantasy anymore. I just was reading so much of it for a period of time there that it was just like, starting to get hard to find new ones to read and then just feeling really burnt out because I wasn't getting any variety and it was what I was writing. And so it was just all YA fantasy all the time. And so starting, I think last year, once I got really into audiobooks, I started branching out into lots of different genres. And now I've been able to like go back and fall back in love with YA fantasy because I like branched out so much into all the other genres as well. 
And I think even as a writer, like I think, you know, back when this channel started, the the advice was kind of like, find your lane and stay in it. And, you know, if you're going to be a YA fantasy writer, you read and write and live and die YA fantasy. And I, I think that's less true now. There's a lot more crossover, you know, um, authors writing YA and adult or authors writing contemporary and fantasy. Like, I, th I just think that's more of a thing now than it used to be. Um, which is great for me because I also like three or four years ago got a little burnt out on just reading only YA fantasy and expanded into, you know, like YA contemporaries and have really, really enjoyed that and started writing that. And it's been really, really great for me. So, okay. This brings up a good point about, oh. I was going to say, I was kind of similar to that point. I think it was a Twitter thread that I read the other day that was like just a whole long list of like YA authors who have adult books coming out this year. Because like so many people have kind of like made that. And that's crossover. a shift this channel has done a lot. And I think for me, kind of rediscovering the joy in my writing last time before I lost it again of like figuring out that I didn't have to just be this YA person of like, oh, I like other stuff and some stuff in YA is resonating less with me now. I don't have to force myself to write that. And learning that I could just kind of evolve as a writer really helped. Mm -hmm. so, and I think there was so much prescriptive writing advice when we were getting our start on the internet <laughs> and a lot of ideas of how you had to be successful from a a marketing standpoint when like really the publisher has all the control <laughs> over that um and they are for the most part going to be the ones determining whether you're successful or not and so all of these things like oh well i'm going to be a ya author which means i cannot dabble until i am an established ya author, you know just mm -hmm. things like that where it's like well you have to do it this way mm -hmm. I think in general, um, when we were kind of talking at the beginning about how our relationship with writing has changed. The biggest thing that's changed for me over the years is just like my like view or, or my idea of like what my career is, what my writing career will be like. Um, and one of those things has been like genres and age categories. Like I very much started the, like started out being like, I'm just going to write like YA fantasy. Maybe I might write like one YA contemporary one day, but like, that's it. And then I started to be like, oh, I want to write some adult fantasy too one day. And then like, oh, I randomly have an idea for an adult romance. I'm going to write that too. Um, and so like, that's one thing that's changed is being like, you know, I kind of want to write in different areas and maybe use different pen names um, for different things. But also just my idea of like, um, kind of going back to what Megan was saying earlier about like what my ideas of success would be and what my career would be like. Cause I think when we started this channel, it was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm going to like work a job until I start selling books. And then, you know, YA books make six figures all the time. <laughs> and I'm going to become like, I'm going to work and write books until I'm making enough money to be a full time writer. And then I decided like a couple years ago that I actually wanted to go get my master's degree and pursue a career as a librarian. And that decision made a big change in my view of my writing career um, because like now I'm invested in this other career. I don't know that I necessarily want to give it up to write full time. Um, and so just like that idea of, I think I felt like you had to be a full time writer if you were going to be a writer and just realizing that like you don't have to and it's okay if you want to pursue other interests and other careers and other hobbies, like you don't have to just be one thing. And that's been kind of like a freeing thing to help me like enjoy writing more, take off that pressure of like, oh, you have to like write enough to make a living. Yeah. I have a similar like feeling with like going into teaching because I will be graduating in April. So, um, you know, for the longest I was like, oh, I well, I want to be a full time writer. So like school doesn't matter that much. Like, you know, <laughs> this will be like my day job. But like recently, like I have been working in schools like every single day as a sub and I love it. It's one of it's like the highlight of my day is working with these kids. And so now it's at the point where it's like, well, I still want to write, but like I have kind of made the decision to like, I don't think I want to traditionally publish. Like, I think I'm really going to go in on like the self-publishing route because I just think one, I think I would enjoy that more. There's less, you know politics I guess of like the publishing industry that you have to deal with um but then again you know that comes with its own challenges but if I'm going to focus if I'm going to have this fulfilling career it doesn't feel so like so much pressure like I have to get an agent I have to do this a certain way I have to make sure like my online presence is you know this active um you know because now I have something else that 
brings me a lot mm -hmm. of joy too. It's not like all of my eggs are in this one writing basket. Yes, that has been huge. Same as well. Um, I went back to school because I figured out like, well, what, what would an ideal day job look like to me? Because writing has been so much less fun when I'm putting the pressure on it of, well, I, I need to make money. I like making money. And um, I, I better just write harder <laughs> and hope that the luck hits because I would love a paycheck. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, similar to kind of what you guys were saying about realizing writing, you didn't need to put all of your eggs in that basket. I think for me, I've realized a lot of like, what I like is creating, not necessarily writing books. So I still like writing books. I still am planning to go back to that. But for me, I don't necessarily want to be just specifically a novel. Like that isn't remotely my goal anymore. So trying to figure out what that looks like. And I do still want to be writing, but maybe it's going to be video games or scripts, or maybe I'm making apps. I don't, I don't know. And like career wise, yeah, that's not great, but not putting the pressure on like, oh, I have to be a novelist. This is the only serious career that lets me make things that there's options. There's so many options and there's going to be something that works for everybody. It just, it mm -hmm. takes a long time to get there. We've been at this for so long. It's all part of the process. For sure. I think, and it can change uh, during your writing career too, you know? Like mm -hmm. if I ever become mega successful, maybe I will stop working for like a decade and focus on writing and then go back to work one day, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think one of the, the most surprisingly helpful things for me in like rediscovering joy, not just in writing, but in the writing community as well, was the decision to switch over to a pen name when we started this channel, I felt very strongly that I didn't want to use a pen name. I wanted it to be my real name. And, you know, that's me on the book cover. And um, I had a really hard time separating my regular life from my internet life. <laughs> and ever since making the switch on all of my socials and deciding like, no, I have a pen name. I'm gonna do that from now on. Um, it has helped take some of the pressure off. It's helped take off weird anxieties that I didn't realize I had, like employers Googling my name and finding that I write horror novels, <laughs> um, which has raised some odd questions in past employment um, that I've had. And yeah, I your mileage may vary, but if you're feeling really stressed, I'd say just try switching over to a pen name. <laughs> Um, we had a comment from LR Red. There's one story I have written and rewritten so many times. I feel like I have to traditionally publish to be successful because it's been so many years, but now it's tiring working on it. Away for a little bit. I, so, um, here, here's kind of my take on this, that as Megan always says, your mileage may vary. Um, this book isn't going anywhere. Um, like it will be there whenever you want to pull it out. Um, and just because you've been working on it for a long time, like that doesn't mean that, you know, it has to be the one that gets you in the door. Um, and I, like, I feel this too, Megan and I are like querying a book that we spent like, I don't know, five years writing and it's not querying great, um, without saying too much about that. And, and it's, it is frustrating to be like, we worked on this for so long. But you know what? I think we're both at a place where if this isn't the one, that it's not the one. And that doesn't mean like writing it wasn't a great experience. That also doesn't mean we can't come back to it down the line if, you know, we kind of get our foot in the door elsewhere. Um, and I, I think, it, yeah, it's not that I don't appreciate the the like the difficulty emotionally of, of maybe letting go of something that you've been working on for so long. Um, but like I, I try to think of it as like, because I've worked on this project so long, I know the value of it. And that value isn't contingent on whether it gets picked up by traditional publishing. Um, and having that mentality of like, not needing traditional publishing to like sort of validate it um, helps kind of free me up to say, I'm going to work on something else and I'm going to come back to you when it's your time. 
I would just say like it's never like wasted time to have worked on one project, even if it never gets published. Um, because like I'm sure you've learned so much about writing and revising and storytelling um, in all the years you've worked on this. Um, so even if you do put it aside and work on something else, and even if it like never sees the light of day, like it still was valuable to your writing career. Um, there is a podcast episode that I really, really love and I recommend it to all of my friends who are struggling with publishing. And it is Julie C. Dow's episode on the write or die podcast. Um, it is so, so good. Julie talks about taking a long road to publishing, taking many years to get published. And I, I don't mean like three years, it, like really like someone who it did take a long time to get published. And um, Julie talks a lot about all of these past projects and how once her books were published, she had this backlog like of books that were all good enough because once you've been writing for that many years, you're probably good enough <laughs> and it's just finding the right timing. And so like she had all these books that she could go back to and be like, oh, you want another one? Here's another one. Here's another one. <laughs> yeah, I think there's like two extremes that writers have to be careful of. Like there's like spending like 10 years just working on one book um, when like it could like you could have made it the best book ever in those 10 years but like if the publishing industry like isn't or like you know if the market isn't right for that book um, or if like the right agent or editor isn't out there for the book then it doesn't matter how perfect you made it you know um, and then the other extreme is like bouncing around from project to project so much that you like never have anything that's ready yeah. um, and finding that balance um, I have found to be difficult because like for me like I just want to move on to another book. <laughs> like, I'm kind of the opposite of LR Red. Like, I'll, like, work on something for, like, a year and then be like, I'm so tired of this book. I'm going to work on something else now. Um, I think you definitely have to find that in between of, like, polishing a book um, but not spending so much time on it that you're not ever getting to write anything See, else. LR Red's comment, like, felt very similar to how I first got started in publishing, but I went the other way because I understand that feeling, but that's where learning about self-publishing because I think I published my first book in like 2013 or something back when self-publishing was kind of just getting started that was the first time I got interested in publishing I always liked writing books but I had no interest in waiting and having someone else have to validate it so knowing that as long as I decide this book is good enough I can publish it and it can find an audience like there are books I've finished writing and haven't published because I just it didn't feel right but I was always the one that got to decide when a book was done or when it was going to go out and none of my books haven't been read by any people like everything found some audience mm -hmm. so for me that was part of what was freeing about self-publishing at the time of like oh i i get to decide and i was also excited about doing all of the other parts of it so it isn't for everybody but for me that same feeling of like i don't want this book to be for nothing self-publishing kind of opened that door for me yeah. and it allows yeah. you to be as prolific as you want to be you can write as many books as you want i i think i am not in a position where i feel like self self publishing is a good option for me um because unlike kelly i'm not excited about like the a lot of the stuff you do when you self publish but also largely just because i write um i i'm still very pretty firmly in Camp YA. And I think not that YA can't be successful in self-publishing, but it's much harder to connect with like teen readers. And to me, it's always been yeah, very important. It's YA for adults in self-publishing. Yeah. yeah. And and for me, it's always been part, like, I really want my books to be read by teenagers. Um, so so that that hasn't been a, a route that has ever been like a very good option for me and what I've written so far. But I think also that even some of the same mentality, I've I've been a lot more like open of like you know, just sharing books with like my friends or my family. Um, and, and that's where I kind of find the readership before it's, you know, published. Um, it's a really small readership, but he, like, it's, it's amazing how even like two or three people being like, Hey, your book is great. Like that's a great mood boost. <laughs> um, it, 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 like even that small of a readership can help a lot. So, and, and you can kind of find that even if you're not self-publishing just by like making your family read it. <laughs> 
Uh, we had a comment from Tessana who said, I found myself falling out of writing block in 2019. I finished four severely underwritten rough drafts that I was extremely overwhelmed by. 2020 did not help my anxiety. And I have just recently found myself falling back in love with writing the less I put pressure on myself and my publishing schedule. That's really, that's the key. The theme of tonight. <laughs> yeah. Less pressure on yourself. Yeah. Like having too much pressure on yourself. Like I know for me, like I've been saying that I wanted to be a published author since I was like in middle school. And like, I kind of wrapped my identity around like my career goals as like a writer. And so I had like, <clears throat> even though like, obviously I haven't even had anything to query, but it's still been like a lot of pressure. Like, oh, like I have to do this or I'm not doing this so then it makes my depression and anxiety worse because I'm not doing this thing that I claim to love, that I claim that I want to do with the rest of my life. And like, I was always like, oh, well, I want to at least have a book out by the time I'm 23 or, and I'm 25 now. So like that didn't happen. Or I want to have a book and be like established like before I get married. Well, I got married last year, so that didn't happen. <laughs> and so it really like, came to a point like and when I decided like you know I think when the time is right I do want to pursue self-publishing because I don't really care if the only person that reads it is my mom like it's a pro like a project that I feel passionate about that you know if other people read it cool but it's just something that I want to do to to see like hey I did this now it's out there and I feel like I would get way more like satisfaction from self-publishing, doing it myself. And I also am a huge like marketing nerd and I like, you know, design and things like that. So, um, but yeah, like, like we said all night, like putting so much pressure on yourself as a writer just sucks all of the joy out of writing. Like it doesn't, it's not fun anymore, at least for me when I had all of this pressure, like, you know, I was like, who am I? Like for a long time, I was like, even like, can I even be a word nerd anymore? Like, do I even like writing? Do I like books anymore? And taking all of that pressure off has made everything, writing, reading, brainstorming, everything way more enjoyable. So, and I, I think maybe a lot of the takeaway from tonight has been about like taking a lot of that pressure off. I'm interested if I can kind of like pose the question to the group of like, how do you balance that with like, like, writing isn't always is going to be fun. And maybe, you know, if you're not aiming to, you know, traditionally publish or whatever, that that's maybe less of an issue. But like, if, if you still have that goal, like how do you kind of balance the, you know, taking pressure off yourself versus knowing like when you just need to like kind of push through. We had a comment, this was like a ways back in the chat from Nicole, who says, I'm doing a tone edit and motivation is low. It's the fifth draft, second year I'm working on it. Um, but being so close to being finished, like, but not actually done, like, is kind of torture and desperately seeking joy. And and that's a position where it's like, it, it feels like, yeah, you should finish that book. You're close. I, like, wouldn't necessarily discourage you from finishing that, even though, like, it is hard right now. Um, but, I, but I guess kind of the bigger question being, like, how do you balance this, like, taking pressure off yourself with maybe also knowing, like, when you should push yourself? I feel like the answer I would lean towards for that particular question, I don't know about Kyra's question, uh, would be like beta readers is what helps me in that of like in those final rounds of edits, having other people's comments and feedback helps keep me going and just like gives me that like more consistent dopamine kick rather than just like counting on myself to just do it and hope it was better as a result. So that is a big thing and having writing friends in general just to like throw problems at and talk out loud to can really help in those final like slog drafts but to Kyra I don't know. <laughs> yeah like like I, I feel like there's something between the extreme of like you know like just pushing yourself to your burnt out and it's not good anymore versus like never pushing yourself and just never completing anything like I feel like there's a happy spot between those that probably is very hard to find I don't know that I've found it I <laughs> lean way more to the words of the burnout side of the spectrum personally um yeah, yeah I, I, me, I I don't have an answer there 
for me, taking some of the pressure off of myself has actually made it easier to complete things and push through things. Um, it might take longer than I would like. Um, because for me, it's more about just like not having the pressure of like, oh, I have to do this in this time frame. Um, or like, yeah, I need to be published before I'm like a certain age or anything like that. Um, but it's not so much removing the motivation to like write something or write something well. Um, that's still there for me. And I still feel that like motivation um, to like have a writing career. And so I know there's things I need to do <laughs> if I want um, to publish books. So it's been, it's made it easier for me to like, access that part of my motivation when I don't give myself such a like an external pressure that was unnecessary. So. I feel like writing friends has been a benefit for Emma as well because she's like given Megan deadlines of like yell at me if I haven't sent you the book <laughs> yeah. by at this point mm -hmm. and so that has worked two books in a row I think so. <laughs> I will pester my friends into getting <laughs> books. If I ever want to make sure I do anything I make Megan pester me about <laughs> it. <laughs> Um, like I said, I do kind of tend to be on the, the other end of like, maybe pushing myself a little bit too hard. Um, and, and like, I, you know, early in my writing career was told, like, you just gotta keep writing. And I really, really took that to heart. I wrote so much <laughs> last year and I'm not sure I enjoyed 50% of it. <laughs> um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to kind of, you know, adjust based on that. Um, but still, like, having writing friends, I think, has been really important um, with that. I sat down with Megan and Aaron um, a couple weeks ago and was kind of, like, trying to find something that I'd be interested in working on. And they helped, like, with the brainstorming aspect of it. But actually, maybe the most helpful thing to come out of that meeting was Aaron just being, like, like Aaron just sat me down so quick and was, like, here's what seems to be working for you. Here's what's not here's what we're going to do as a writing group to like try and tap into this aspect that is working more for you. Um, and, and just like having someone else to kind of get me out of the, the cycle that I was stuck in um, and just to kind of help me adapt my processes, like was completely invaluable. And I walked away from that meeting feeling better about writing than I had in like months. Yeah. I think, like, just knowing that, like, productivity isn't, like, a sign of moral good in any way, you know? <laughs> like, you aren't, like, a better person if you're more productive. Where, like, for me, it was, like, not, I don't have to make myself feel bad. I don't have to beat myself up if I, like, don't write as many words as Kyra does or something, you know? Um, that there isn't anything, like, more morally superior in, like, doing more I think can help people on like both ends of the spectrum sometimes yeah yeah I think too publishing is moving so slowly right now um it always moves slow traditional publishing does however it is moving particularly slowly right now because not only are writers feeling this way agents are feeling this way editors are feeling this way just all the way up everyone is feeling this way and because of the industry is kind of not able to do everything that they would want to do typically. And I think keeping that in mind, for me, a huge comfort has just been that in this amount of time, not putting pressure on myself to go out with anything querying, I now have two books that I could get query ready very quickly. And just knowing that I have those kind of on deck and so, you know, if this book that Kyra and I are querying doesn't pan out, I can get those books ready for whenever I'm ready to go out querying again. Um, and you, you can play, you can get to the climax of your book and be like, you know what, I want to break, I'm gonna write something else. Like, it's fine. Nothing bad happens, which was revelatory to me. Mm -hmm. um, that like, you can just go write something that you're having more fun writing, just because then it doesn't mean you're giving up on anything. Like you can finish that off pretty quickly. So. I also liked um, further up in the chat, ATW said something about, um, oh, here it is. I found some books don't deserve the polish. For me, it's about a quarter of the books I write and shove in the drawer. Um, I think that can be helpful too sometimes to realize that, like you don't have to like revise 
a book and get it like query ready or self publish ready. Like some books can just be bu books that like taught you something about drafting. Um, like I have some of the books I've drafted, like I want to go back to one day and some of them I'm like, no, that was just like me getting this out of my system and it does never have to see the light of day. It's fine. Um, yeah, I've stolen pieces out of almost every single book that I have trunked, except for like the first one or two books I wrote, I have stolen like full characters and just stuck them in new worlds. Um, a future fantasy idea that I have is like a total revamp of the book that I was in Pitch Wars with in 2016. And I'm very excited about it. Just it's like fan fiction. I already know those characters. It's also fun as, as a critique partner being like, hey, I know those characters. <laughs> it's like a character you know walks by in a top hat. You're like, ah. <laughs> ha -ha, it's you. I liked you, sassy necromancer. <laughs> Joe Catherine says, Marie Kondo, your drafts and works in progress. Absolutely. Um, my pen name, ATW said my pen name came from my first two books, first name from first, last name from last. And that was all that was worth saving from them. <laughs> um, Elora Red writes, says, I don't really have writing friends, but I'm so self-critical that it would be ter that I would be too terrified even if I did. Um, that's a valid pair. Like it's scary to show your writing to people. Um, I am scared to send a first draft thing to Megan and Aaron, who I have been friends with for years. And Megan has certainly seen me write worse stuff than what I will be sending her this week. <laughs> but it's still it's still a little scary. Yeah, it's a it's a fear that's worth working through. Your writing will be better, and it's not as it's scary to start, and it gets easier, and you learn so much more from just getting other people's feedback along the way, and you find people that you trust and you can be open with in terms of like, okay, I cannot take intense criticism. Like there's just like the encouragement drafts. Well, these were positive positive passes. Passes. Yeah. Pass. yeah. So yeah. you can ask for things like that and you can find people you work well with and it's a process as well, but. Yeah. I, I actually think if valuable. you're, if you're like the kind of writer who's just like really critical of your own work, um, chances are, beta readers or critique partners are going to be less critical of your work than you are. Um, that might not be the case if you're just somebody who's just like very like confident about your work. Like, wow, everything I write is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I am the next J.R. Tolkien or something. Um, then that might not be true. But um, I think for most of us who are like very critical of our own work, a lot of times you're, you'll be surprised by sending it to other people and then being like, oh no, this is actually really good <laughs> I, I have a critique partner who's so hypercritical of their work that a lot of my job as a critique partner is actually saying like you need to worry less about this <laughs> like like the this critique partner will get really hung up on like you know should I have this scene take place at the grocery store or the park and it's like that it, it's not that big of a deal <laughs> you can make either one of those work you're a good enough writer to work out any either one of those um yeah, and I think because this was LR Red who said this, kind of going back to your comment about like working on the same book for years and like rewriting and rewriting and rewriting, having other people look at your book will probably help a lot. And because mm -hmm. chances are, if you're like that, um, you may be just making changes to make changes. Um, I know I can sometimes be like that where like I write something and I'm like, oh, this just seems to be like completely rewritten. I've got to like make these huge changes, change everything. Um, and that may not actually be the case. Um, and so that can actually be really helpful if you find you're like spending a really long time just like revising the same book over and over again. You may need like another set of eyes to be like, no, this actually like you could query this, you know. Mm -hmm. I would recommend if um, you haven't yet finding a social media that you like participating in and just start talking through it. Like you don't have to jump in and be like, Hey, here's my work. Just start commenting on people's posts, you know, just like making friends from that regard. And then once you do, it'll take time. But once you have some people who you have a rapport with, um, ask to do a positivity swap. Um, don't, Obviously, you can do what you want and what feels best for you. But if you're really, really worried about um, getting critical feedback for the first time, just ask for a positivity pass for the first one. 
just so that you get used to the feeling of giving someone your work. Because I know, especially when you haven't given it to someone before, it feels like you have just like cut off a little piece of your heart and you're like, here, what do you, do you like it? It's from my body. Um, but if you find someone who feels similarly to you, they're going to be doing the same thing and they're going to feel the same way and they're going to be yeah. just as gentle as you would want them to be. Because yeah, like Joe Catherine said, it's valid to ask for gentleness. And I think now is going to be the best time to find so many people who would love that same energy. I'm mm -hmm. like, we're all just kind of easing back into this. Let's just find some joy. For sure. Um... I used to think I was too tough for positivity passes. I was like, nah, just give it to me straight. And now I'm like, please just tell me nice things. I don't want to hear. <laughs> tell me it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not that I don't still have people like give me like feedback, feedback too. But uh, you learn to like also appreciate just like, no, just, just tell me it's nice and lovely and you want to read more. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be true. Just tell me it's good. Yeah. I mean, like life is a circle. Our writing group, we are just going right back to how we started the group, what, like nine years ago. Um, it's been like nine years, eight or nine. Um, and like when we started it, we didn't know what we were doing. And so we were all just writing books as we went and bringing them to group and people were reading them and asking questions. And that was really fun. And we were in writing group where we've previously been doing a lot of critiques and a lot of brainstorming and just thinking like, hey, that was really fun. That felt very magical. So let's try it again. You know, like there's nothing wrong with taking a step back, even if it feels like your progression is going back. It's it's not going backwards if you are having more fun writing. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, I'm a better writer now than when we started the group. So even though we're doing the same thing we were doing when we started the group, the book is going to be better. There's one, one girl from our founding group, though. I think about her book all the time. <laughs> we'll never know how it ends. Dang it. I, I had not thought about that book in months and you just reminded me. You <laughs> just ruined your night. You did. I'm going to go write fan fiction of her book just to finish it. <laughs> like those incompleted fan fictions that just like never get completed you never yeah no that's that's yeah as her yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> how she's doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like email her and be like hey did you ever finish that book <laughs> so... can, just, can you at least give me your notes on what was supposed to happen <laughs> <laughs> give me the synopsis and permission to finish it like... <laughs> <laughs> i almost wonder if it because that book was like it was a very nine years ago YA marketable book it was like vaguely dystopian and apparently dystopians kind of make it a comeback that's that's the word on the street mm -hmm. so I wonder I wonder <laughs> <laughs> it had like creepy house vibes creepy paternal figure <laughs> talking Great. car talking car you know the works the works yeah <laughs> All right, so we're at about an hour. Is there anything else we want to cover before we call it for the evening? Um, yeah, we are. We kind of have a theme this month. I've scheduled all the live chats for the rest of the month. Our theme is basically just like having fun with writing and storytelling. So next week, we are going to be talking about things uh, filling our creative well. Yes, things we're loving. Expect to hear me talk about Yellow Jackets again. Um, you have one week to watch Yellow Jackets. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm now here to tag team it with you. So, um, I have also read it. You it today. Yes, I haven't watched it yet. Um, yeah. Is that others. why you have to go immediately after this? Because that would totally No, I have to take a test. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> less fun. You Are you going to watch, watch Yellow Jackets Yellow after jacket. the test? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a reward. It's like a reward. Yeah. You know, just watch some trauma. And then go to bed. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about all of the different things. Um, shows, books, music, anything. Anything that we're yeah. loving that's getting us And inspired. that'll be a bit of a theme for the quarter as well. So we yes. love all the things for a little while. Start 2022 mm -hmm. off with a just joy. Gentle thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. I hope this is going to be a wonderful year of writing and all of the other things for all of us. We're all going to be in this together. We'll figure it out as we go. 
Uh, hopefully we'll see you all next week to talk about things bringing us joy. We'd love to hear from you guys what's filling your creative wells. It's always a lot of fun and we just go off on random tangents. So it's going to be a good week. And in the meantime, enjoy your writing as best you can. Find some new things to bring you joy and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.